what are your future or ideal goals with your art? Like, what, where do you want to see it going over the next few years? Oh, it's so exciting. <laughs> um, I never really think of goals as a long-term thing. It's more like, what can I do this week or next week or any of those. Um, like, sh- It's like short-term goals. So really, at the moment, I'm doing a really, really exciting collaboration um, with a certain Adam. And that is something. <laughs> that's something I'm. I'm really looking forward to at the minute. So I'm very like that. Like very like now. Like yes, we're doing this now. I'm really excited. So I don't know where it's gonna go. But for now, I have that. I have really exciting um, Christmas and holiday stuff coming up. So I'm just thinking about that. And then I just want to travel more and draw more and meet people and have more fun and. I'd love to draw some big things on walls. That's one thing I'd love to do. Like, I'd love someone to hire me to draw, like, a mural. <laughs> that would be nice. If I had a house, you could come and scroll all you like. I know. And people could come say hi and bring me things, like, bring <laughs> food. Do you want to make some requests? <laughs> I really like some nice, like, yeah, some, some snacks would be great. Okay, cool. <laughs> I should have brought snacks. I'm a terrible host. It's good, you're perfect. Okay, cool. <laughs> I want to talk about actually the environment within which you work. Like, do you have music on? Do you have snackage? <laughs> do you have a glass of wine? I don't know. What's the ideal scenario for you? See, I actually North? stopped drinking like a few months ago because I don't know, I've been hanging out, out with people that don't drink as much. So, kind of just boring now. So, yeah, I like at the moment. Well, for a long time, hip hop has been the main thing that I listen to um, while I draw, because I kind of like how I don't know how harsh and like how I don't know. I can't explain. I just like how dark it is at times, and I think people often overlook that and think that only a certain type of music can be can be kind of dark. But like, listen to like Biggie, and he some of his lyrics are like horrible, but it really inspires me because they're so like emotional and so like aggressive sometimes and um, so hip-hop's the main one and I like being at home I like being at bed in fact this is one of my favorite places outside of my own bed I like to draw the Barbican has so many nice little nooks and quiet places um, to just chill and work so yeah it depends really I'm getting better at drawing anywhere but hip-hop's like a, a main factor it just goes along with everything a nice cup of green tea yeah perfect and is there a time of day that you say you're most prolific at? Oh, definitely night time. Yeah. Probably about 11pm, it's like 3am. Yeah. That's I'm inconvenient. <laughs> yeah. I just can't help it. I really like working late at night. Yeah. Um, things are more quiet. And I think that's when your weirdest thoughts start to come out as well. <laughs> now, I want to talk about... You said that your family was very supportive of what they... Are they... Well, now. No. Oh, well, that's interesting. So, did it take a while for them to adjust to this career plan, given that you'd done, like, history of art? Yeah, very. Um, my dad's actually from Cyprus. So I'm from, like, a Greek family. And although my mum is... is um, she's actually Scottish, but she also kind of took on that of... I don't know. They're very... When I say Greek family, I know only my dad is Greek, but it's kind of that vibe of kind of traditional with the career thing and I know that my parents would support me whatever I did but at first my dad was very very into the idea of me being a doctor or a solicitor and I just I can't do maths and I can't do science and it took him a while I think to accept that I wasn't that person like I have three amazing sisters and they're all so good at what they do and one of them is a doctor and I always felt like that pressure because she's just a bit old she's like the next one up in age and um, yeah I always felt pressure to give in to that but you can't like I can't become good at something I'm not good at and I think when my dad realized like wait I could do this as a job my daughter can like actually have a career of this then he respected it a bit more and my mom's just like she's always supportive whatever I do she just still loves me so that's good so now I have both of them really supportive my dad like manages my business basically yeah he's He's like retired businessman and it's really nice to have that kind of actual knowledge of things um, and support to it, finally. So I get the question all the time, like people's parents aren't supporting them, what do they do? Yeah. The only thing you can do is explain and keep doing what you love. And like, I did go to uni, I didn't really enjoy it, but you can't hold on to that stuff and regret it. Like I tried it out and 
I think that's what matters. And it's made you who you are now. Exactly. All these things do, so yeah. no point regretting. It's contributed to me and yeah. this thing. <laughs> now what are the other questions we got a lot of it was the inspiration what are the things I think you said travel so going to Holland inspired you recently what other things you can you think of recently mainly being in like being in love all the, like in life I think that's one of the most inspiring things because we all get so smushy and, and sometimes I just sit there and I cry because I'm like oh my god I'm loved and I love like that's such a nice thing um, so the people around me inspire me, how I'm feeling, how they make me feel, arguments or like friendships, all of these human relationships really, really inspire me. Anything that causes me to feel, whether that be good or bad. And we've seen online you've obviously got very close friendships with some other creative people. Do you find that you are attracted and magnetised to creative people generally? Oh yeah, I think it's so easy to um, be friends with people that you relate to. I always talk to Hannah about a need to create and we're always like oh my god I bought these new supplies and I think that's really nice to be with people that are not only similar but supportive of each other because um, what we do like Hannah especially we're so different uh, in style it's so nice to be able to talk to someone about art and to talk about what we do and I think that's important how do you get over that I, I don't know if you've had it I know I have but the, the, the block when you just can't create when nothing's happening it's just not working oh, yeah how do you get over that well I used to force it and now I just don't do anything and I just think it's okay like it's all right to have those days when nothing works and I used to really force them and kind of hate myself for not being able to do so but you can't because it just becomes counterproductive and you get even worse yeah I just let it kind of just let it go and um, yeah, I just say to myself, tomorrow might be better, it might not, but it's all right. It's okay to have bad days. Do you find there's a pattern, like, that you you generally have a mental block, maybe when you're tired or when you're stressed? Or... Yeah, I think the work I create, obviously it relies on some kind of stress because it is so emotional. If there's too much, I just can't do anything. Like, I will just be there and not be able to do anything productive the entire day. Sorry, <laughs> quite noisy all of a sudden. Very so. noisy, yeah. canteen type. Didn't think this through. You can go, you can go. <laughs> I like how she was trying to go slow. Let's <laughs> <laughs> Just go.